Something you would think would be very important about video games is that they're fair, beatable, winnable, something you can actually complete. However, this is not always the case. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks 10, extremely unfair quests in video games. Starting off with number 10, Hell on Wheels from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. This is the mission where you get to try out Leonardo da Vinci's tank, and yes, that's like one of the funniest things to say. Is it as funny in the game? Ah, maybe for a minute, but it wears off pretty quick because it just plays out kind of like a tank mission. And given it's like the only tank in existence, normally you just go on a killing spree with mostly no problems, but if you really want to complete all the additional objectives, you have to beat the mission without taking any damage. Zero while in the tank. At all. None. So half the fun of using a tank is watching enemies shoot at you and it doing nothing. Just not damaging you at all. But they just had to tack on this requirement. So instead of getting to go on a proper rampage, you have to play this mesh in like super cautious, borderline stealth. Because any random shot hitting the tank, even a little tiny little nothing, you can't complete the optional objectives, period. The tank part isn't even the whole mission. Like there's an on foot part before the tank part. It's short, but if you fail it, the only option is to restart the entire mission all over. So you don't start from the tank part, you start from the on foot part and it's kind of irritating. Also, it's just unfair. It's a tank thing. Like that's the point of having the tank. At number nine is the gambler challenges from RDR2. Any kind of quest that's dependent on randomness is automatically gonna suck, so it really shouldn't come as a surprise that the gambler challenges from Red Dead 2 are particularly infamous. These things start out easy enough with objectives like win five hands of poker, but as you rank up, the requirements get more annoying and the chances of you even getting to do some of this stuff gets lower and lower. Possibly the worst rank challenge is the one for rank eight, where it wants you to win three hands of blackjack with three hits or more. Now, <laughs> I don't know if you're a gambler, but the chances of winning a game of blackjack with three hits is astronomically low. Just one winning hand is a miracle. Three might as well be impossible. Here we have 10. Card, please. A 20. Uh, no. Uh, there's nothing worse than finally getting a decent hand after three hits, only for the dealer to get a 21. That's like just the game begging you to whip out a pistol and blow the dealer away. At number eight, deliver the delicate flower from Hollow Knight. Like the Souls games that inspired it, Hollow Knight only has a few side quests, but the ones that are can be very frustrating. Uh, this one's one of the hardest, where a secret character asks you to do something that sounds pretty simple, deliver a flower to their lover's grave on the other side of the map. I, it's just a fetch quest. But the problem is a single hit will damage the flower and fail the mission. That means you gotta trudge all the way back to the quest giver, get a new flower, and try again. And it's not like this game's map is small, it's huge. And most fast travel options damage the flower, so you're forced to walk it. Any other scenario shouldn't be that hard to avoid taking damage, but the closer you get to the goal, the more nerve wracking the whole thing is. And it doesn't help the final resting place of the flower is in one of the most dangerous zones of the game. Most people would just skip this one if they could, but delivering the flower to a different character can unlock an entirely new ending. One that requires you to finish the ball bustingly difficult pantheon of Hollow Nest, which good luck with that. At number seven is Dodging Lightning from Final Fantasy X, a pretty easy RPG for the most part. It's the side content where the game really starts to show its fangs. Blitzball, Chocobo Racing, uh, these are pretty difficult mini games, but probably the worst is to upgrade Lulu's ultimate weapon. How ultimate weapons work in Final Fantasy X is that you need to find the weapon, usually in an extremely out of the way obscure location, then find specific sigils that can be used to power them up. To fully unlock the potential of the Onion Knight, Lulu's weapon, you need to dodge 200 lightning bolts at the Thunder Plains. Now, dodging lightning is all about timing. You see a flash of light, you press X to get out of the way. Simple enough to pull off every once in a while, but having to do it 200 times in a row, uh, brutal. Yeah. 
If you leave the area or try to save the game, count resets. Only way to do it off is to pull it off sequentially, which sucks. Just to make things even more annoying too, there's no in-game counter or notification for how many strikes you've avoided, so you just have to keep track yourself. Uh, on top of that, there are still enemy encounters. That'll mess up your rhythm. Removing random encounters is pretty essential. And even with everything set up to work for you, it's 200 dodges. That's an endurance test. Not hard to screw up, but certainly not difficult to get fed up. It's one of the most infamous challenges on the list, and for good reason. This all sounds bad, but trying to do it, believe me, actually worse. At number six is sinking ships in Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. One more example to add to the pile of how luck-based minigames suck. This one is especially bad because there's no skill involved at all. It's literally just the board game Battleship, but in a Legend of Zelda game. Winning isn't that hard, and you get a piece of heart for your trouble, but things take a turn for the extremely unfair if you challenge Salvatore again. Now if you want the reward, which is a treasure chart leading to another piece of heart, then you have to beat him using less than 20 cannons. And if you want the last reward, you have to beat your lowest score, which depending on how well you did, can be actually literally impossible. This one is so annoying, in fact, that the Wind Waker speedrun community created a tool to accurately predict where your targets may be hiding. When a quest is so annoying that people are literally creating their own special web programs to help people finish it, then yeah, it might be a little unfair. At number 5 is the Nintendo Coin Quest from Donkey Kong Country 64. Pretty much everything I've covered on this list so far has been optional. But what makes this quest so unfair is that it's something that feels like it's kind of a post-game challenge, uh, but it's required to beat the game. On the third level of Donkey Kong 64, called Frantic Factory, there's an arcade game of the original Donkey Kong Country. Normally, fun little Easter egg, right? But of course, the genius behind the notoriously tedious Donkey Kong 64 found a way to suck all the fun right out of the arcade classic. That's because if you want to gain access to the final boss of the game, the last boss, the thing that you're trying to beat the game through a requirement. You have to beat every level in the Donkey Kong arcade game, not one time, but two times. Now, unless you're already a King of Kong trying to beat these four levels with a few lives in the game, uh, it's almost impossible. I've seen more than a few people take it. it, took them literal years to beat this challenge, which is just nuts. <laughs> At number four is the President's Run in Driver. You want unfair? You come to the right place. The original driver on the PlayStation? Zero mercy. This is a game that is so difficult, a huge chunk of people never get through the tutorial. Now, counterintuitively, the game actually gets easier after the tutorial, but if you really want an unfair quest from this game, look no further than the President's Run. It's actually the final mission of the game, but it's so difficult, and so few people have actually bothered with it, or even the campaign mode as a whole, it might as well be optional. For the final mission, your job is to protect the President. The car you're driving is slow, the roads might as well be covered in ice because there's really slippery and the police and the mob everybody is out for blood the president's blood specifically getting through the mission alive takes a lot of skill and just as much luck because if your pursuers manage to get a good hit or two on you you might as well restart because you're not going to win there's no way to accurately explain just how infuriating this mission can be uh, you just start off getting battered by everything in sight and getting something as harmless as a little rear end bump can send you spiraling out of control this is the one mission where i'm gonna say cheating isn't just possible it's it's a recommended thing to do at number three extreme cosplay from the witcher 3 a relatively easy to miss quest from the Blood and Wine expansion. And while it has a kind of humorous premise, for whatever reason, the enemies you fight are incredibly powerful and very dangerous. They are so bad that if you're playing on the hardest difficulty level, Death March, then the mission goes from nearly impossible to actually literally impossible because the wizards you take on do so much damage that they kill you before you actually can do anything. Even on normal, these enemies hit hard, but they're basically unavoidable at first and can be a challenge even for people who are much, much higher level than they are. But seriously, it is a mission where you literally cannot win if you're playing on the hardest difficulty. If that is not unfair, I do not know what is.
And number two is the Extreme Behemoth, aka a visitor from Aerzea from Monster Hunter World, generally considered the hardest fight in all of Monster Hunter World. This famous Final Fantasy monster is totally optional. It was added to the game as a bit of cross promotion with Final Fantasy XIV, and while it's not exactly a canon part of the game, it's no less dangerous. This thing is incredibly tough. Uh, it casts these devastating magic spells, it's surprisingly fast, just an all-around pain. Its spells are by far the worst thing about it. It does have an instant kill attack that can only be avoided if you manage to stun it, and that'll only work if you got the best possible weapons, otherwise it's just gonna resist everything and throw at it. That seems bad enough, but it's also got this incredibly annoying tornado spell attack where it just basically summons a vortex on top of you, which does damage and makes it hard as hell to even see what's going on. Compared to the more relatively down-to-earth monsters of Monster Hunter World, the spells that Behemoth can sling at you are just really unfair and make an already incredibly hard fight even worse. And at number one is Riovan's Roof from Final Fantasy Tactics. There is nothing more unfair in a game than when a quest can be failed through no fault of your own, or you lose just because the game decides to screw you. Riovan's Roof from Final Fantasy Tactics is just a straight up unfair, awful quest for one simple reason. It's an escort mission, and the person you're escorting is worthless. Most of the time, the first thing your escort will try to do is run straight into the enemy army, which, you know, is idiotic, but is a precursor to how stupid they can actually be because they just stand there. They get ganged up on immediately, and mission failed. Totally your fault. What, you didn't actually get to do anything? Nope, still, your, it's your fault. You're, you're the problem here. What's even worse is that this is the third mission in a row at this castle, and there's no way to leave once it's started. So unless you made a backup save, you're stuck with no way to quit or grind experience or, or anything. It's a map where your game goes to die. And it's not early in the game or anything. It is deep in. It's like 20 to 30 hours into the game. And if you get stuck here, that's it. That time was all just completely wasted. And it's because this game sticks you with a dumb escort at the last minute. Now, with the right classes, this mission can be a cakewalk, but you have to be prepared for this mission specifically. Otherwise, it's very difficult, even literally impossible, depending on what happens. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.